Sound one, two, check, check. All right, friends. Well, welcome back to another video in the Kratom series. I am Adam. I go by Coach Hard Gains because that is my coaching platform. Hard Gains with a Z. I've been coaching bodybuilders and mentoring recovering addicts for a very long time. And uh, I have a lot of experience with addiction personally, and I am not ashamed to share it. I'm not ashamed to discuss it. And I am certainly not ashamed to walk with you while you are getting through your journey. That is why I've developed this channel, this platform called Healing Together. Friends, we are and we should be in this together. And I mean that. And most of you by now have figured that out. I don't play around with negativity. I don't tolerate the bullshit. I don't tolerate put downs or bullying because we're in this together. We're here to support each other. Now, today's video comes highly requested. Again, I've been saying that a lot lately because the amazing thing is we are literally getting dozens and dozens and dozens of requests to all of my social media platforms at this point, many of which are asking for the same videos. So today's video is going to be a little special. And as a side note, to many of you who have also commented on the picture quality of the videos, I have been playing around with some different lenses and some different picture profiles. If you happen to see one that you like the most, please let me know in the comments section. I'm trying to give you the best product possible. Today's video is gonna be special. This is why. Got a little show and tell for you. Now in today's video, it has been requested of me that I discuss and compare Kratom to all my pharmaceutical drugs. That's a lot. That's not even all of them. But let's put it this way. Just like many of you, doctors will throw anything at you hoping something's going to stick. So while I've been going to different doctors, different specialists, different pain managements, different internal and this and external and holistic, and I've seen them all. And we've tried lots of different things. I've done the holistic, organic, homeopathic thing. I've done the shots and I've even had surgery you know I had a spinal fusion recently um, my my nerve degeneration my nerve damage is severe my recent car accident two months ago has put me in so much pain my neck my leg my hip my right side is so painful I feel like I'm back to where I was a year and a half ago after my spinal fusion it really is not fun. Oh, by the way, today is Super Bowl Sunday, 2023, so I will just make it known. Let's go, Eagles. I am covering this up today because it is a cold day in Pennsylvania. But last time that I included a thumbnail with this particular tank top on it, I had someone comment that he was hoping I would show more skin after seeing my thumbnail in a bra. But we laughed about it, and I enjoyed that one. I thought that was fun. Because technically, this, this thumbnail does look like I'm wearing a bra. But, proudfully, my boobies look pretty big. I've been working on them. All right. So here we are today. The main subject is Kratom versus pharmaceutical medications. Not just pharmaceutical medications. Prescriptions, over-the-counter, homeopathic, natural. I've done them all especially for pain management and sleep because I've been a poor sleeper my whole life. I have ADHD. I also have a brain injury from getting cracked in the skull, which bruised my brain from the back end of one of my dump trucks seven years ago, which left me with a major TBI. I've always had trouble sleeping because I have an overactive mind. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been a business owner my entire life. I started my first company at 14, and from there I just ran with entrepreneurship, and I've always done it. I've had successful companies, I've had flops, but everything taught me something, and that is where I am today. Very. We discuss medications, and this comes in a host of different categories, okay? Then we also talk about Kratom, which also covers a host of different categories. The main categories we're going to focus in this video are pain management and potentially your SSRI, SNRI medication replacement. Because there are a lot of people who are turning to Kratom hoping, hoping for it to replace their anti-anxiety, antidepressant medications. 
This is not always possible. It's not always a good thing. It's not always advisable, okay? And we'll get into that later. Remember, I am not a doctor. I'm not a scientist. I'm a coach. I'm a mentor. I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've worked with more people than most therapists, most psychiatrists. But I am not one of them, and I don't want to be. My experiences with psychiatrists has been negative. Many of my clients have come to me from negative experience with psychiatrists, okay? That does not mean therapists, but there is a very big difference in the way that people approach human beings, especially when the word addict comes into play. And that is where I personally get very emotional and get very personal. When we start throwing around the word addict, I take it personally because I know that all too well. That is why I do what I do, and that is why I love every one of my clients, and that is why we all become friends. Because we are friends, and we're here to support each other. Let's discuss pain management first. Because eight years ago, my primary need for Kratom, when it was introduced to me, was for pain management. I owned a construction company, a tree service, a landscape company. I also had a handmade furniture company. One day at work while I was cutting down a tree, I was climbing. I blew my back out. I had a slight climbing accident. I could barely walk. I could barely move my whole right side. I already had a blown disc. I had two degenerated discs, but I had blown my L5S1 outside of the vertebrae. So if these were the vertebrae and there's a jelly disc in between, my jelly disc went poop. And then my vertebrae closed, bone on bone. Then being an arborist on top of that, I'm climbing trees in a saddle, opening, closing, opening, closing, my vertebrae, chipping pieces off, and those bone flecks got in between my vertebrae and were grinding all day long. And this was the most excruciating pain I have ever felt. Excruciating. Just grinding all day. And I knew it was there and it couldn't go away. So all I could do was mask it until I had my spinal fusion when they opened me up, cleaned it out, put it in a cage, fused me, and screws, and all the other stuff. So I needed a spinal fusion. If you need more information, please go back and watch my spinal fusion videos. I'm laying in bed eight, eight years ago. This was before my spinal fusion, kind of at the height of my spinal issues, where my right leg, my right sciatic nerve, constantly was being impinged. Constantly. My carpenter brought over a small bottle of red Mangda capsules. I started with two, felt a little bit. Then a couple hours later, I took four and I felt really good. I felt the analgesic effects. I felt my pain just melting off. I felt this warm, happy feeling. Again, and I liken it, I liken it, I liken it, I'll say it again, in my other videos, to being hooked up to an IV of Dilaudid. How many IVs of Dilaudid have you had? I've had dozens and dozens and dozens. Because when my TBI gets exacerbated, I end up in the emergency and the first thing you do is put an IV of Dilaudid in me immediately. It's the only thing that allows me to open my eyes. An IV of Dilaudid, the way that it kicks, the way that it comes on, the warmth that you feel, the saturation of the opioid receptors, the happiness, the euphoria, the, the, the pleasantness, okay, the dopamine hit, the serotonin rush, that is what it was like for me the first time I took a significant enough amount of Kratom to feel it. It felt great. Because the best part about that, for the first time, my mind wasn't just focused on pain. My mind was free. This is why I will forever be an advocate and I will always say, hashtag Kratom saves lives. Because in that moment, it gave me mine back. I have six kids. I was married for 16 years, happily divorced at this point, and fighting for custody of all my children. But at the time, I was working my ass off with five of my active companies that I created for my children. Every single day, and coaching, and training, and bodybuilding. I would still do chair work in the music industry, which means I'd get hired for a night to come in and assistant produce or be the engineer for a studio session. But once I found Kratom, my life changed. My life changed. I got my life back. I was able to get up, get out of bed, walk around, put weight on my right leg without pain shooting up my spine. It was crazy. It was insane. Because I had been on 
tons of ibuprofen, tons of Tylenol, tons of NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Previously, I had already had a bout with opioid medication, narcotic medication, muscle relaxant medication. And I had to get off of those because of problems. And I didn't want to relive that. Kratom saved my freaking life. It gave me my life. It gave me a quality worth living. It allowed me to get up, go play with my kids, pick up my child without hurting. I don't know how. It's crazy. It's crazy the way that Kratom can just get into the central nervous system and soothe everything and make you feel better. It, it, it literally just massages those worn muscles and, and, and soothes those, those broken and beaten joints. But, notice how helpful Kratom is in amazing ways? That's also why the withdrawal is such a nightmare compared to other substances. Because Kratom helps in these amazing ways that nothing else does. But that also means it's affecting all these different things, these different areas of the body, the body chemistry, in ways that nothing else does. That's why withdrawal. For those of you who have really gone through Kratom withdrawal, you know Kratom withdrawal is worse than everything else. And yes, individual biochemical profiles will allow us to feel things differently from one another. But Kratom withdrawal is real. Now, taking Kratom for pain management, what makes me reach for Kratom rather than an anti-inflammatory? Acetaminophen-based Tylenol or some, that bullshit. Narcotic. Opioid. What makes me reach for Kratom instead? The fact of the matter is Kratom just works better. Okay, There are times when Oxy works a little bit better. Times. Depends on the pain in my body. If it's more of a deep muscular pain and I take Oxy in the right dose, that will help my pain more than Kratom will. But later on in the evening, when I want to lie down and my body hurts all over and my body is throbbing head to toe and I'm pulsing because the blood is just, is just filling my body and it hurts and all my nerves hurt and the gabapentin has worn off and it's not working. If I take a tablespoon, and again, um, these are not suggested doses, these are just what I take that works for me. Please remember the more you take, the more dependent your body will become and the harsher the withdrawal will be. But at night, if I'm, if I'm in nerve pain and my muscular pain is just throbbing me, I reach for a tablespoon of red Bali Kratom. Within a half an hour, I am soothed. I can't get that relief from gabapentin because it takes two hours to kick in and it doesn't feel that way. I can't get that relief from Tylenol or Ibuprofen. Not at all. I can't get that relief from a handful of Oxy or Dilaudid or other narcotics. And hopefully you're not utilizing anything heavier for pain management at this point. That's why we're making these Kratom videos to, to choose our healthiest option, right? Please remember, we are also doing this for harm mitigation. We are choosing the option that comes with the least amount of harm to our body, to our mind, to our soul. So Kratom, especially a good red that hits me well, which is red Bali. Sometimes I will replace that with a red elephant or a red mangda. And if I've overused reds for a while, I will then turn to a gold Bali or even like a yellow horn, which has a little bit of a, of a green feeling to it, but also gives me good pain relief. I'll also add in here that there are many people that do not subscribe to the strain thing. They think that all the strains are the same, no matter what, the color of the strain is just the drying process, and, and the yada yada yada, they don't believe in it. To them, I say, you're not doing it right. You're not using it right, because I see a very noticeable difference. But again, it also has to do with your chemistry, what your chemistry is used to. If you've been overly saturating your opioid receptors for a long time with Suboxone or Buprenorphine or meth or heroin or, or these other drugs that, that hit the opioid, or opioid receptors in a way that causes the body to go into preservation mode and start deleting other receptors so that you just don't have as many to hit, then when you go to Kratom, you're not going to feel anything. 
you got to really, really get off everything and resensitize. And I'll say this, after eight years of use, I used to use whites, I used to use greens, a lot of greens. But now, for some reason, and I know that it's an issue with my serotonin reuptake going on, okay? I've been studying this long enough and paying attention to my blood work. But unfortunately, even a catecholamine blood test can't accurately tell you neurotransmitter function in the brain so we just can't know what's going on with our dopamine or serotonin or norepinephrine or our neurotransmitters in the brain we know there's receptors in the gut and then gut health kind of indicates certain things if we pay attention to it but that's a very deep topic that's very individual that we should get into at some point kratom and gut health but Kratom for me has come in and replaced just about all my pain medications. You know, they're handing gabapentin out like it's candy. Problem is, is now it's on the street and it's got more rep on the street than anything. And I hate the way I feel on those. I don't like taking anything that takes away my feeling of being me, okay? There's a difference between taking weed, smoking weed and being blazed versus taking kratom and feeling euphoric or some might call it high i don't call it high because i'm functional there's no amount of kratom that makes me inebriated or incapable of functioning properly i take too much kratom and i get a headache i get the spins or the wobbles and then i have to lie down it doesn't make you high as crap. And there's some stupid videos circulating. There's this dumbass channel, my mom's basement or your mom's house or something like that. Hold on, I'll find it. Obviously, we know Joe Rogan talks about Kratom a lot. And I respect what he has said about Kratom. But at the same time, a lot of other people just want to take Kratom and sound cool. And they're like, oh, I was... I was effed out of my mind on Kratom in the gym, and you just, you sound like a douchebag. First off, nobody believes that you were in the gym in the first place. Secondly, oh, here it is. Working out on Kratom, a YMH short, your mom's house podcast. I'm sure I'm going to upset some of you. Some of you probably like these guys. They're pretty big. This guy here, your mom's house podcast podcast hold on this guy this guy says and I was just geeked out of my mind you like that somebody else said something but this guy your mom's house podcast or something like that I've never watched them except for this this podcast on Kratom and I don't need to watch them again, frankly. Uh, I thought it was a... I don't want to be too insulting. I do that. I'm sorry. I'm harsh. I didn't care for it. To me, it was like watching Greg Doucette. I'm not going to watch Greg Doucette because I can't stand his videos. This guy really brought nothing to the table. And he's talking about Kratom like he was like fried out of his mind at the gym. Like, oh, I was geeked out of my... He's literally going like this. Like, man, I was so geeked out of my mind. And no, you fucking you weren't. What? What is wrong with you? That means he probably never took any kind of opioids in his entire life. Maybe he's taken Kratom. He probably smoked weed. Probably a weed smoker. I think that's how weed smokers react to taking high amounts of Kratom. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you guys. I know a lot of you do enjoy your Mary. I think that what I've been told from my clients is that if you're more of like a weed guy or girl, then like when you take a lot of Kratom, it kind of makes you feel high, but to you it's a different high because you're used to the weed high. No, no, I, I, I don't, I hate weed. Uh, I've never smoked weed itself. I've taken the Delta 9, 10, wait, 8, 8, 9, 10, THC, CBD, all that stuff. Advised from my doctors, my pain management doctors saying, hey, try THC, try CBD. Well, I tried it and I hated it. Like that feeling, I hate it. I don't want that. I don't want that. Because then I'm not in control. And where I grew up, I got in lots of altercations because I had to be, I had to have my wits about me. I had to be on top of things or, or I would have been taken, you know, beaten or killed. So I don't like that feeling. 
To me, Kratom is perfect. It, again, it's similar to opioids. Um, opioids are slightly similar to like an alcohol buzz, which is very completely different than weed. And I, I don't like weed. I hate that feeling. I don't want it. I don't want that weed. That, I seriously don't even know how you people like live that way. Like I, 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 I would literally just sit there like this. Like afraid to close my eyes. If I was smoking weed all day. You guys are like living on weed. I'm like, how do you do this? So, I don't know where I go. Uh, all right. So, I guess the side note is we already know there's a lot of misinformation going on about Kratom. And it's dangerous information, guys. It is literally dangerous information that people should not be opening their mouths. They don't know jack shit about Kratom. So, they need to and not promote anything they don't know about. Same thing with Mark Bell. Mark Bell and his channel putting out like everything you need to know about Kratom. Did you guys watch that video? Mark Bell's everything you need to know about Kratom? Well, well, I, there wasn't anything that I did not know about Kratom. Even like a newbie. It wasn't even good information. It wasn't even accurate information. Not to mention the fact that I already have feelings about Mark Bell and his, his co-host. Uh, that guy, you know, with the whole Liver King debacle liars about steroids. And I think his the co-host, the black dude, is like, he's bullshit and lying. He's on gear. He's been on TRT for years. They're all liars, guys. So again, rewind back to Kratom and pain management. Now, if I had to choose every prescription in the world versus Kratom, I would still choose Kratom. But the problem is, now I know what happens when consuming Kratom every day over time. And it's really been damaging to my hormonal panel. And again, I need to encourage you all to continue to get your blood work done, tested, checked regularly, because Kratom will affect your blood work, okay? We are, we are reporting hypothyroidism, hypogonadism. We're reporting test crashes, estrogen crashes, hormonal crashes, a lot of things, guys. So I reach for Kratom. I reach for Red Bolly. I feel the pain analgesic effects kick in the best. The properties for Red Bolly really work well for me. And again, the color, the strain, is a result of the drying process in the vein. The center vein will turn a little red or turn more green or turn a little gold or turn a little white. And it's the drying process that, that really affects the alkaloid content within that leaf, that plant. Then you have certain leaves that develop little horns, and so they're called, you know, and an, an a horn plant, right? A yellow horn. So there's all these different factors. We can talk about that in another video if you're interested. Because again, that's another topic that there is a lot of misinformation about. And many of you are spreading misinformation. So please, be careful. Pain management, Kratom, number one. That's what I choose, okay? It works best. It just works the best. Now, I'll also point out that the reason why the reds work so well for pain management with the analgesic effects is because the alkaloid content tends to be higher off the bat. The mitragynine and the 7-OH mitragynine tends to be a little higher. Most of your Kratom bags are marked with the alkaloid content, so keep an eye on them. Some are not. Even my favorite, Red Bali from Kingdom Kratom, is not, but I can tell you it's a strong strain, and I've never ever had a bad experience with Red Bolly from Kingdom Kratom. Not a sponsored video, not a promotion. Some people do get decent pain management out of greens, but then I also feel like they're not really in need of severe pain management like I am, like many others are. So red is really your go-to. Now remember, the more plant matter you consume, the harder it is on your system. The harder that is on your gut, on your gut membrane, on your gut bio on your kidneys, on your liver. You need to be making sure that you're drinking enough water or cutting down your plant matter, taking some tea, taking Kratom in as a tea, which I, I don't, I never do, but I'm very careful with the way I consume plant matter and I drink a gallon of water a day. And I take, for kidney and liver support, I take NAC, N-A-C, and Tudka. T-U-D-C-A. Those are my two main supplements for kidney and liver support. I advise you to take a look at those and start if you are taking Kratom every day, especially a powder. Now, especially if you're consuming plant matter daily, you need to make sure that your kidneys and your liver are filtering properly because it can cause problems. Pay attention to your body and it will tell you everything. So again, comparing Kratom to pain management 
there really isn't any comparison. Kratom wins hands down, and that's why FDA is trying to regulate it. Because Kratom really does endanger the money-making properties of pharmaceuticals. We'll leave it at that. I've said enough about that. Now, let's discuss briefly Kratom in replace of your anti-anxiety or antidepressant or your SSRI or SNRI. Now remember, these drugs operate on the serotonergic pathway. Now, serotonin is a neurotransmitter. It's a very important neurotransmitter. Kratom affects your serotonin just like it affects your dopamine. Kratom can actually damage your neurotransmitters when you're consuming it every day over and over and blasting your opioid receptors. We're going to have a video just on that, just on the dangers of daily consumption, just on the dangers of your, of your neurotransmitter function, okay? This is important. But for those of you taking SSRIs and SNRIs, let's talk about this for a second. SSRI, Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitor. And then SNRI stands for Serotonin Norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. So while they have similar functions, they do it on separate pathways. SSRIs attack serotonin. SNRIs attack serotonin and norepinephrine, two transmitters. They are different in their function. I personally only have a limited experience with both. I've never needed an antidepressant. I have utilized a few different anti-anxieties for the current situation. I have gone through some situations in life that have been very difficult and trying. And so I have tried things like Cymbalta, uh, Buspirone, um, Xanax. I've tried many benzodiazepines. Um, so I, I have experience with these personally, but I also especially have a lot of clients who are on SNRIs and SSRIs, individually, not combined. It's, unfortunately, it's a mixed reaction. Because Kratom comes in, blasts your dopamine, blasts your serotonin, gives you these happy feelings, these great feelings. Anytime you go up, you have to allow your body to go down, and that's the problem. When you go up and you stay up and you're riding that up, that can lead to something called serotonin syndrome because your serotonin spikes and it stays too high for too long. That can actually make you sick and then they say potentially cause death. I don't want to get into this conversation yet, but anytime there has been a death associated with Kratom consumption, there has to be more to it. There has to be. And I, I would venture to say that I already think I know what some of those things have been. But I don't know these families. It's not my business. That is a very sensitive topic. And no one wants to get into why their family member died. I certainly don't. But I know Kratom very well. I respect Kratom very well. And I know that there are certain people that should not be taking Kratom daily. Should not be taking Kratom in high doses should not be mixing Kratom with their other med medications. You really should not be taking Kratom if you are on an SSRI in a higher dose, an SSRI in a higher dose, because they're conflicting, because Kratom raises this serotonin. And actually, when you are on Kratom, the ones that raise serotonin a little higher, you feel that, you feel that high a little more than that crash. If you notice, some people are getting anxiety during that crash. When the serotonin drops, they're getting it. What I think, personally, this is just Coach Hardgain speaking, I think that it's an effect of the drop in serotonin that a lot of people are getting that anxiety. And that's dangerous. It's not a good feeling. It's leading people to panic attacks. So my suggestion is to take, you know, weaker strains, less alkaloid content. Because the stronger the strain, the higher the alkaloid content, man, the higher the up, the harsher the down. Then if you are combining it with a serotonin reuptake inhibitor, which maintains that serotonin up there and doesn't let it cleanse out, just keeps that up there, that's kind of a recipe for danger in many ways. And chemically, there's a lot of other issues that arise with things that 
counteract that within our bodies. And that's again why it's so important that you don't drink alcohol while you're taking Kratom or taking medications. It's also important why you're not mixing multiple different medications that... Let's be real, guys. How much do we really know about how they interact with each other? Pretty limited. So again, I don't want to make this video too long, but at least we've started the conversation about Kratom versus medications and pain management. I hope that at least that encourages you to have some thoughts, ideas, and questions. Put them down in the comments section. Request more videos, guys. This is awesome. This is great. I'm just adding videos onto the list every day from what you request, and I will eventually be getting to them one by one. Now, please find me on Instagram at Coach Hard Games with a Z. I hope you've already liked this video and subscribed to the channel. This is Healing Together. You can also find me at Coach Hard Gains. Coach Hard Gains will have a slightly different approach to much of this information, and it may not necessarily be for you, but that's why I have put it into these two different platforms. But Healing Together is my main channel, and that is the main community. Now, some of you have noticed I have opened up the books to certain people, to certain clients. I am starting consultations once again. I'm sorry if I haven't gotten to you just yet. It only means that you are just down a little further on the list. That's all it means. Out of respect for all of you, we are really trying to just get to everybody in order from first, second, third, fourth, and down the list, okay? I'm not playing any type of preferences. My assistant is not giving me certain names and not others. It's just the list, okay? So if you need immediate services, if you need an emergency service, I do offer those. Reach out, send me a DM, either on Instagram or at coachhardgains at gmail.com. And we will have a full calendar available soon. It's just a matter of me being able to open that part of my life back up again, which has been tough since the car accident. So thank you all again for watching. You guys are what makes this channel continue worth doing. I love it. And I'm praying for all of you. I do want to make a special shout out to my boy here who has been on our community for a long time. He goes by E. Coles and he is just kicking butt on his spinal fusion recovery. Of course, I went the wrong way. Watching a hard gains video while doing his workout. Find him on Instagram, guys. Encourage him along the way. He had his spinal fusion. He's been a member of this community since the beginning. He's an OG and he's a valuable member of this community. At many of your requests, we will actually be having Healing Together t-shirts coming out very soon. We are working on a really cool design that I think many of you will like for our first run. Drop a line in the comment section if you are going to want a t-shirt and what size you wear, so at least I know what we should make our first order for. It's going to be mostly smalls, or men's, mediums, or extra larges, or women's mediums, or I, you know what I mean? Kids! You want to get them for the whole family? Take a picture? Put it online! I love it. All right, cool. I got to get out of here. I got some food to eat and a Super Bowl to watch. Have a blessed day, everyone.